Well, that's what we're seeing is that the earth has been a lot more violent than we've often been told. Mm -hmm. And that, give me another example. The last ice age when it ended, we're taught today that the explanation for so many megafauna dying, you know, like large animals like woolly mammoths and such, mm -hmm. the explanation we're given for why they died. And by the way, like my good friend, Randall Carlson, we have good conversations around this. 44 million megafauna died during that event. 44 the million died in the Northern Hemisphere. In North America, right? Northern Hemisphere, because that's where it was the hardest hit. Now, mm -hmm. we're told that indigenous groups overhunted these right. megafauna, and that's what led to their extinction. Completely backwards, completely wrong. In fact, the opposite is true. Indigenous people were very respectful of populations. They would never overhunt. But the more important part to take away is no, we Steve, found- Steve, this was a, a recent article published in a, when one of the websites, some, uh, like it was either New York Post or uh, Wall Street Journal, something like that. What we found though, across the Northern hemisphere, Northern Alaska, Northern Canada, and other places, like especially Siberia, are massive boneyards, massive events where mm. they all these mammoths all instantly died. Right. And so what we're finding, especially in the areas called the New Siberian Islands in the early 1900s, they went up and explored and were mapping them out. And they found entire mammoths that had been flash frozen with not only undigested food in their stomachs, but actually in their throats. Yeah, wasn't that how they came up with the term Younger Dryas? Because it had the driest flower. The flower yeah. from that time period. Mm -hmm. What gets wild though, is that, so um, the, the frozen company, um, uh, Bird's Eye, really funny, like, right? Of all things, how random is that? Bird's Eye, way back in the day, was doing some studies because they freeze things. And so they were doing a study on how cold it would have had to have been to freeze a mammoth, right? It was so funny, like a frozen food company. They determined it had to have been at least negative 150 degrees. Whoa. Instantly. Instantly to freeze a mammoth like that. I mean, they're the hardiest animal on the, on the earth. Now, here's where it gets really wild. To flash freeze. Flash freeze a mammoth. A mammoth. Here's where it gets really wild is that during the older Dryas on in, in ice cores from Greenland, you can see this huge spike at 14,500 14, years ago, like warmer than now, okay? Crazy huge spike before all this chaos happened right after. A spike in temperatures that's like abnormal and it only lasted for maybe a year or two or like even that. So when Edward Toll, the explorer, went up to New Siberians and found the frozen mammoths, it wasn't the only thing he found. He found a 30 foot tall alder tree that was hundreds of miles north of where any trees can grow. Okay. Like out of place. Not only that, it was flash frozen like the mammoths with green leaves. Green leaves. It wasn't like a seasonal climate, like seasons came in and shifted. Mm -hmm. It was in the middle of summer. So how And the tree some... froze with green leaves and the mammoths froze. In the middle of summer, it means that this event caused the temperatures up in the north to drop as low as negative 150 degrees like instantly how does that i mean like i understand if comets hit it's going to black out the sun and the atmosphere and it's going to cause it to get very cold quickly but how do you explain like instantaneously going to negative 100 degrees have you ever seen let's see i won't i was going to bring up a movie here but um okay if you get severe interactions from the sun and i so there's a lot of people in my my field that are that are cosmic impact theorists mm -hmm. i'm not one of them i'm in the camp of dr robert shock that instead of an impact it's more of like a giant cme event solar mass ejection massive charged particle event that bombards the earth and causes the magnetosphere of the whole planet to become weak weakened and then the poles all shift okay when the poles all shift, you get a weakening of that electromagnetic grid that protects the earth and holes open up. Now, those holes can have a couple interesting effects. One of them is that if those charged particles get through one of those holes, they can like fry the earth. And so when we were at Kefkalesi in the Vaughn region, that was actually probably the primary reason Robert decided to join my the, the exploration investigation of the, what we were doing is that I was like, Robert, I'm 
pretty sure from my understanding of geology that these blocks, beautiful basalt cut blocks, have vitrification on them. And I showed him pictures of meaning melted, melted stone. And so I showed him pictures. He came out and we, we hiked up to this mountain temple. It's so beautiful called Kef Kalesi. Mm -hmm. And there's a massive megalith. It's, it's about 50 tons. It's huge. It's like four feet by four feet. It's, it's enormous. And the sides have all broken off and the top still has a beautiful smooth uh, area where they cut it, where they, where they, whatever, however they did that on the top of this block. The whole front of it and these bubbles is we can see where the basalt, which is one of the hardest stones on earth, it's a volcanic stone, is melted, turned into glass. Mm -hmm. So it has glass on the top of it. And he came and identified it as is, it is 100% vitrification. Now, in order to get basalt to melt, you'd have to have temperatures to, what do you think? To get basalt to Just melt? Just to get stone to melt, like quartz or basalt or anything that's got a high- know, thousand degrees? Two, nearly 2,000 degrees Wow! So on the surface. So like we're complaining about, you know, Death Valley getting like 140. Mm. How about 2,000? So you would essentially, you would vaporize. So if, 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 if Danny Jones was hanging out at one of those sites. Well, that'd be like a lightning strike, right? Something it would, like you would just poof, you just kind of disappear. Yeah. Um, and that's what's so fascinating is then, okay, so it's vitrification. It's on a stone that's already been cut. So we know the, the, the stone predated that event because mm. it has cuts on it and mm -hmm. it's beautiful but it means that whenever that had vitrification it had to have been an extreme event so that's the point is you don't just get vitrification from like everyday thunderstorms or regular events right vitrification has to come from an extreme event right. like something that is affecting like the whole poles of the earth and opening up holes and the reason why these ancient sites are so targeted because you don't just see vitrification like all over the place. It's because they were only using stones that were highly magnetic in most cases, mm -hmm. like they were like lightning rods. So when you have these events come through, they end up focusing on these places because they're highly magnetic. And so they basically attract electromagnetism and all these things. And, right. they, and that's what's really fascinating, Danny, is that we saw and nearby sites, not just Kev Kalesi, but Shavu's Tepe next to it, that the actual original stone formations, that were, the temples that were there, literally exploded. Like, exploded. We found fragments oh, that were scattered over like Oh, Serapium boxes exploded what? too? Some of the Serapium boxes in Egypt. Yes, so that's like a great example. In the, in the Serapium in Egypt, there's these giant granite boxes and the same thing happened there. Like it was an overwhelm, like an overload of energy. Mm -hmm. And that these areas were like specifically ended up getting that overload because the upper Susi temple at Shavu's Tepe, there's nothing left of it. And, but what you find are an arc in a very specific, you can like measure it even like an arc of an arc where everything blew and flew towards. And there's, there are all these blocks and there are all the beautiful cuts that were once in the, the temple, but they're all broken. Right. All of them, like frat, all broken into pieces, like hundreds yeah. of them, <clears throat> like they exploded, like yes. the whole thing exploded. Right. <laughs>